When it comes to product creation, there is a wide spectrum of what you can do. Kate Hansen is here to help you figure out where on the spectrum you should start. And I think food bloggers, as they grow, they can kind of like move up that scale. And, and because they're, you know, they might have more revenue from their blog that they can then pour into developing some kind of new product. You know, if you want to start up here in the product, I, I don't think that's bad, but you have to realize you're probably going to go out and have to get some funding. Hey there, I'm Jason Logston, and this is Macon Bacon, all about helping you serve your fans, grow your income, and get the most out of your blog. As many of you know, I'm a huge fan of creating products and services to really increase the value you're offering to your fans. But what does that actually mean? In a recent podcast of mine, I talked to Kate Hansen, the creator and inventor of the Ergo Spout. She talks about the spectrum of products that you can create and where food bloggers should start on the spectrum, because not every type of product is as easy to make as another one. They all have benefits and negatives, and knowing what they are can really help you choose where you should start. So here's some of that conversation from that podcast episode. If a food blogger says, I'm interested in creating a product, I have an idea, things that they should be kind of aware of that might crop up that could save them some effort in the long term. Well, I think to start out, I might say that I feel like product development, there's like a spectrum. And, you know, down at the bottom of the spectrum are really your, like, digital products that you can create 100% yourself. You can crank out that content and you can create something to sell. And it's not going to cost a ton to, like, a ton of money to invest and create that. And then you might move up the line and then you might create, like, rebranded products. Like, you don't have to invent the product, right? Like, it, um, you know, get on Alibaba or these might be your T-shirts or an apron with your logo on it. It's a rebranded product. So it's a product that already exists, but you're putting your own brand on it in order to sell it. You know, it, like a white labeling or, a, you know, custom labeling of something. And then the next thing might go up, what I call, call her the, the Me Too products. It's a product that kind of has already been done before, but you might put your own little spin on it, a little bit of difference. You know, you might you might tweak it yourself um, and, you know, or, or maybe package it in a different way, you know, pull together a couple different products. And so you're, the thing that you're selling is, is different. It's been, you know, it hasn't been done in that way before. Depending on how much you change in a product, you might be getting to something that's really unique. Now, you don't want to go too far off this spectrum because you can get to something that is so original that no one will ever buy it because they can't even conceive it. Like, you know, you're a, you enter an adoption problem because <laughs> they, don't, they don't understand what the product is because it's so, you know, unique. I feel like there's this kind of spectrum and a good place to start for food bloggers is down where something you have hundred percent control of over as you move up the spectrum, you're moving up your need for capital in terms of the cost to create a product. And, and I feel like you also need to probably increase your patience because the amount it takes to get your return on your money is going to be a lot longer um, in, in order to do that. And so you, I think it would be good for food bloggers to think about, well, where's my interest? Like, how interested are you in developing your own product? Um, you know, are you willing to do what it takes? That's why we use Kickstarters, because it takes a lot more capital to do something that is unique and hasn't been done before. Food bloggers, as they grow, they can kind of like move up that scale. And, and because they're, you know, they might have more revenue from their blog that they can then pour into developing some kind of new product. Um, you know, if you want to start up here in the product, I, I don't think that's bad, but you have to realize you're probably going to go out and have to get some funding. You're going to have to start with a Kickstarter or you're going to have to go get some loans or you're going to have to get some investors because the amount of money it takes to create a product where you're buying your molds, you're manufacturing and you're doing that is a little bit different. And so I guess that's kind of what I would think about is like, where on that spectrum are you comfortable and do you want to, to create products? There is such a variety of things that you can do out there and the spectrum, knowing that where you want to be on that spectrum and doing multiple products, you know, if you start off at the bottom, you're starting to facilitate and nurture that group of fans that are going to buy from you that we were talking about earlier. And by the time you get up to a product, you will hopefully have some dedicated fans that really are looking for the next thing that you're putting out. Now you know a lot of what the spectrum of types of products that you can create is. But if you're interested in some more specifics about what your different options are, check out this video. It's going to help you figure out everything you need to know about the types of products and services that are available for food bloggers. Till next time, I'm Jason Logston.